So yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Jessica and I'm from Virginia Tech. And this work is in uh, collaboration with the Center for HCI as well as the Department of Statistics, both at Virginia Tech. So I'm going to explain a little bit real fast and then jump into, there we go, into a demo, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so my work is focused on human model interaction. So really looking at when a, when a human is directly or indirectly working with a model, now how does the interaction help or hurt uh, their understanding of the model as well as their ability to analyze data? And what we've done is we've developed principles to guide this interaction design. So when you're thinking about specifically dimension reduction, which is what we normally use, uh, what do you have to think about in order to design these interactions? We've developed these uh, principles through three classroom user studies, as well as two very controlled user studies, looking iteratively at people actually using the system and seeing their reactions to the interactions and their reactions to the results of the model. Which is going to like make a lot more sense uh, when I show this demo here. So in order to test and really look at how these users are using all these interactions in this model, we've developed a system or an interface called Andromeda. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So this is high dimensional data. We've got lots of, we did this uh, study at some point, we used this data with seventh grade girls. So it's kind of a fun data set. It's a bunch of animals and characteristics that, that just, just, just describe those animals. So my favorite one is furriness. On a scale of zero to 100, how furry is an animal? <laughs> Which is great with, with uh, 12 year old girls. Um, normally pretty fun for you guys too. So we specifically use weighted multidimensional scaling. But these principles that we've designed are meant for more high level than that. So you can plug in any other dimension reduction algorithm, and these are principles that you still need to think about, no matter what the interactions are. So one of the main interactions in this system is object level interaction. So as you can see, we have a dimension reduction, dimension reduction algorithm, WMDS, has projected into a two-dimensional space all of these animals, where near equals similar. And that's what a key point um, that one of my principles focus on is near equals similar is something that users understand. Right? They understand that if I, if I have something that's important to me, I'm going to keep it close to me. So for example, the horse and the gorilla supposedly are more similar than the horse is down here to the otter. Right? And that's based on all of these characteristics or dimensions. Now, I might want to inject some knowledge into this information to say, hey, I think that the pig is actually more similar to the elephant than what the system is telling me. So I'm going to move, and lots of crazy things are about to happen, I'm going to move the pig very close to the elephant. Now notice the system is now telling me, I'm moving the pig, the elephant is now green, which indicates it's closer, right? I'm telling the system, I want to know how they're similar. Well, in doing that, I'm also dragging it away from the Persian cat, saying it's more different. But all I've done is drag that pig, and a user really understands what's going on. Now if you notice, uh, we've got dynamic interaction going on, or dynamic exploration, where these, all these other points, the light gray ones, are looking at, if I were to drop the pig right here, right now, that's where all the points are going to move, right? Because the inverse uh, is finding the weights, and the uh, going back to the normal WMDS is now reprojecting those points based on these new weights. So, what I've learned is the pig and the elephant are more similar based on long neck, hops, uh, hibernate is pretty up there. Right? Now if I do the opposite here and drag the pig, and everything's moving, um, everything's looking at the distances. And I'm dragging this, this pig down to the Persian cat, now muscle is very highly weighted. But I'm able, to, I'm able to actually visualize that over there on the muscle scale, the raw data for pig and Persian cat are very, very close, the blue and the green dot, versus the red dot, which is the elephant, it apparently is more muscular than these other two animals. So I'm connecting the projection to the dimensions. So you're starting to get the user to understand why is it that the projection looks like this based on the interactions. All right, so I'm going to let go. We still have parametric interaction in this system, where let's say I really don't care about muscle. 
as much as the system seems to think I do. So I'm just going to downweigh that. Right? So I'm, I'm telling the system, that's not as important. I don't, I don't care. Right? I can drag it all the way back down. And the system is automatically updating that. Now if you notice, I haven't really told you much about the algorithm itself. I don't really need to. And we found with these studies that if you design the interactions to fit what the user is thinking about and how the user is actually analyzing the data, then they don't have to understand the underlying model. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to jump back into my presentation. There were some pretty interesting uh, interactions that we found that users did. Um, One of the main problems that a specific principle came out of was what we call with respect to what. So this is one of the first designs that we had of our interface. Uh, if you'll notice, sort of the, the left side over there is um, the old preview, and the new side is the new projection. So imagine the user has moved, and I know it's very hard to see. Um, there were two points in the bottom left corner of that left screen. The user. This is a data set about um, a classroom and uh, lots of students in the classroom. They were all graduate students, except for two professors were in this data set. Professors were outliers. They were way down in the bottom left-hand corner. But the, the student really wanted to find out, these professors have to be like us in some way in this data set. So we want to force those outliers into the cluster at that top right corner. Well, this algorithm, the way it works, is it only considers moved points because we're assuming that the user is moving points, right? And those are the ones that they care about, right? Well, in this situation, that's not true. They only moved two points, but they moved them into a cluster, which to them was very meaningful. But guess what? The model gave us this picture on the right-hand side, and the user was like, what? What happened? The outliers are back where I put, back where they were. I don't like that. So, interestingly, this is what happened. They're like, well, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to move the entire cluster down to the bottom left corner. Right? So they moved everything except those two outliers. They still didn't touch those two outliers because they didn't realize they had to. So it again right, gave us the same picture. So the user didn't know what was going on. What they expected their input to be, the model wasn't getting. So we designed an interaction to help them with that. As the user moves a point, you'll notice there's a radius. In that radius, points are automatically getting highlighted. Highlighted is basically almost the same as moved. So we're telling the user, it's important for you to say, with respect, I'm moving this one point with respect to these other points. The system is doing it automatically, and guess what? That problem didn't happen anymore. You move an outlier into the cluster, the system automatically accounts for what your interaction probably means, and then everything's fine. So you really have to think about the visualization needs to automatically elicit as much input from the user as it can, as well as visually denote the input to the user for, to try to get the user to understand what they actually need to do. Again, they still don't understand the algorithm. They still don't know, and they still don't need to know what the model is doing. But they understand the interaction, and it's intuitive. So I mentioned this dynamic updating while I was doing the demo. That's something that is very useful for users, we have found. Right? If, if the user starts messing with the data and moving points and letting the algorithm run uh, at, at intermittent times instead of constantly, if the user's not really getting the output that they expect, uh, then they kind of move on to a different question. They don't explore whatever analysis question they were asking, which isn't, isn't really great for, for, for an analysis because we want users to explore all these different avenues and really dig into the data and look at it from different angles. So this dynamic update uh, allows the user to really move around and say, well, what if I did this? What if I moved the point over here, over here? And what happens? And the algorithm is, is luckily fast enough to make that work. And if we add more points, you know, that's a little bit of a problem, um, but we're, we're working on that as well. So we don't want it to just be a solely batch update. We don't want the user to have to move points and have the burden be on them to decide, when do I hit update? When do I want the model? to actually give me more results. So as I mentioned, the, the algorithm we mostly work with is weighted multidimensional scaling. And we have developed an inverse of that, so inverse MDS, where 
we now have the ability to do object-level interaction as well as parametric interaction. So that's very important for a user to be able to go back and forth between those two types of interactions. Now the other thing that we found is WMDS is not deterministic. So we may get this picture, right, this projection, where all the animals are in a certain location. Well, to, to the algorithm, this picture is the exact same thing. All of the pairwise distances are the same in both pictures. But if you notice, it's rotated as well as flipped. To a model, that doesn't matter. Everything's the same, everything's great. But to a user, that's very jarring. The user thinks, hey, it changed. The picture changed. What happened? Why? I don't like this. Right? They, they give meaning to it, even though there isn't any meaning to be had. So we found it's pretty important for non-deterministic algorithms to add additional implementation so that you mitigate these stochastic effects. You mitigate the flipping and the rotating. Right? So if you have any non-deterministic algorithm, it's important to really think about how can we kind of stop that? Right? How can we kind of make it a little bit more smooth for a user? So in conclusion, uh, this, this work really, I think, supports the idea of human model interaction and exactly what this workshop has been about all day in that we really need to look at how is the user involved in the model and how can we, in my work, hide the model but let the model be useful for a user. You know, and, and we really need to match up the interactions we design for these models to make sure they make sense to the user and they're intuitive, but they also stay true to the model parameters and the constraints of the, of the model. Because if we don't actually have those still intact, then you know, we run, is we run um, there are issues with the model not working correctly and not giving us good results. Right? So we need to focus on, on both and work, work them together. Thank you.